Um, so we have uh, presentations up uh, back to back, uh, first by Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas and then followed by Goodwin. May I request on stage uh, Ms. Reba Chako, she's the senior partner, Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas and uh, Mr. Harish S, partner, Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas. Uh, it will be followed by Mr. Abhishek Krishnan, partner, Goodwin. Good evening and uh, thank you to IVCA for having us here. So we've come, as you can see, we've combined the next two presentations. When we started today, before we entered the, the, the venue, we were saying, what will I do with 10 minutes? And now I'm thinking, what will I do in 10 minutes? Because uh, the last four sessions have uh, kind of covered everything that uh, we had prepared. So I don't really need the presentation. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of do it like a common presentation from the Indian legal regulatory side, uh, where actually my presentation should just say Chandi uh, what he said. That's all that uh, I need to do, but because uh, we have the 10 minutes, I'm going to use it um, as, as, as best as possible. Uh, so I think in the first second, you know, sit session, we, said, we saw why, why, flipped, why flips happen and why reverse flips are happening. And um, as, as we've seen through and heard the last sessions, the, the reverse flipping is right now in a manic stage. It is prolific. In, within the week itself, uh, there have been three different conversations of uh, companies, businesses looking to uh, you know, migrate back into India for all the reasons that have been discussed. But what is this, this imminent Desire, desire to move into India is driven by the IPO, uh, you know, fever that is that is happening. Some of the fantastic I, I, IPOs which have happened uh, in the last uh, 12 months or so, and even in the period where there weren't as many IPOs, the depth of the Indian capital markets, uh, where large secondary trades happened um, in the listed space gave global investors the confidence that the Indian capital markets, be it in going public or uh, after having gone public, if you decide to stay on, the depth of the market is uh, attractive enough uh, and has given them the confidence to uh, get the best, best valuation and the best exits, uh, notwithstanding any other uh, you know, downsides that originally drove them to flip outside India, be it uh, ease of doing business or regulatory restrictions, uh, notwithstanding all of that, um, on the one hand, all of those have diluted significantly. Some of the regulatory restrictions um, have diluted pretty much. Uh, but, but the advantages of getting the best valuation in India compared to anywhere else in the world and uh, the cost, whether it's regulatory cost, tax cost, just the cost-benefit analysis uh, gave them the right answer. So that's that's really what is driving conversations uh, right now. And um, in terms of issues which which are relevant and which are uh, you know dominating our conversations now, in terms of uh, structural steps that require that are required to be done in coming inwards, um, be it through a court process, which is the merger, uh, you know, some of whether it's Grow and a few several others, both from Singapore and other jurisdictions which are happening into India. Um, other jurisdictions allowing outbound mergers and Indian uh, regulatory regime favoring inbound mergers. Um, I think that's a huge impetus to uh, movement. Uh, whether you do a, uh, a phone pay type of structure where you play, pay a huge, uh, you know, a, a private transaction or you do a court structure, both it's a matter of cost versus time, uh, you know, choice of uh, choice of uh, the structure to be followed. Uh, some of the couple of uh, issues that are being discussed is when I come back to India, when I bring back the structure into India, am I going to go public as a promoter, uh, you know, a promoter owned driven, you know, managed company or is it a professionally managed company? Because a founder being a promoter or not, uh, what is the holding of the promoter in the Indian company? There are implications to being named a promoter and a company going public with a promoter. 
we, uh, versus without, uh, you know, having a promoter, but having a professionally managed company. So several considerations which are structural, which, uh, which whether it's diluting below 10%, and I'm not going into a, into a lecture of what rules are relevant, but that is an important factor which is determining movement back into India. Um, because being a promoter has implications on uh, what rights, uh, what incentive structures are possible in India, and so on and so forth. The second consideration is when, uh, when, when investors and founders are moving back into India, there is a rewrite of their inter say agreements and package. And it is not as simple as simply change the agreement from entities outside to uh, you know, moving it into India. There are several rewrites that are required to fall in line with what the Indian regulatory regime um, it will call for investor, founder, uh, inter se rights and you know, packages. Uh, that's an important consideration. Uh, Chandi mentioned PN3, if there are land bordering country investors, uh, structures that, that will need to be phased out into more than one, one step. I think that's the way a lot of structures are happening, and we are doing. We are in the midst of several, uh, you know, instances where there are land bordering countries um, which have investors in, invested into those structures. We will have to use nuanced structures uh, in flipping back. It's not a one-step flipping, reverse flipping, but we'll have to phase it out uh, in a way that uh, that complies with the Indian regulatory regime. Um, I'm uh, going to request my partner, Harish, who is in the midst of, uh, I don't know how many, but several reverse flipping uh, structuring that is uh, happening. So, Harish, why don't you add the word? Yeah, I think what has changed from the last 18 months to now is between the advisors, between the founders, investors, there's a lot of maturity of thought and what is really needed. Uh, there has been... In Singapore, at least, now we have a precedent. It took us 12 months to develop that precedent to figure out whether that interpretation was possible or not. Uh, figuring out some of these uh, considerations that, are, that you can see on the board are each debated over at least six to seven months to find out the most optimal structure for, for a company. And we can safely say that at least 18 months to 12 months later, between a bunch of advisors, we now have a finite set of 100 questions. And we possibly say 89 have nuanced answers and 11 are just possible, may not be possible. And they're all driven by how you can come into India. What is your ultimate objective? Uh, while many companies want to come into India to list, not all of them are listing in the 10 to 12 or 18 month time frame. So there are some who have a longer uh, window available. For those, the same considerations may not, uh, may not apply. Uh, how reversible is the reverse flip is something Chandi touched upon. And um, I think the, whether it's a $5 billion or the $50 million companies are asking, someone who is just set up uh, 24 months ago is wondering whether they should come back uh, into India or not. And the considerations for them will be very, very different uh, uh, from what are for mature companies. Merger is a long, long route uh, in terms of time. And it's not only the advisors, the founders, the investors who need to think through on what the implications are. What we've realized is even our judicial ecosystem that is dealing with these cross-border flips is not really fully attuned with what is allowed and what is not allowed. So we've actually had to spend six to seven months, uh, I wouldn't say educating, but making them familiar that this actually regime exists in India. And we are really coming to you to be able to do the usual stuff to validate uh, that process and not really uh, think that this is a sudden you know, new approval process. Uh, Key things that probably taking from where Reba left, uh, I think there are. It's important to understand sometimes some sort of regulatory approval uh, nuances as well. Um, there is an antitrust uh, law in India, which uh, will get triggered when uh, some of these conversations happen. So to figure out whether you know you need to have conversation with the regulator early enough to be able to get those approvals, 
a lot of uh, financial services companies who are RBI regulated have to go for approvals. You have to start those conversations in parallel. It's uh, each of it is a sort of a 12 month uh, to nine to 12 month process. So all of those putting all ducks in a row is really what I think all of us are um, um, sort of working towards. Uh, in 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 some instances. Uh, a merger is not straightforward. Uh, you have shareholders that you cannot take out immediately. Then you have to find them exits before before you come in. Very peculiar situations. Globally established uh, companies with you know let's say Middle East operations have offered SOPs to um, some favorite neighbors that we have. They cannot travel into India under any circumstances. So you. You cannot even apply to approval for the government. So you have to find out solutions for those uh, for those situations. I think uh, that that level of nuancing each business uh, has its uh, sort of peculiar problems and concerns. And I think what we have done over the last 18 months is really navigate uh, navigate that. Uh, there are there are things which are developing. We are glad that the new share swap regime is here uh, in, se in some sense. And I, I, I don't think all of us are ready to hang our hats on that yet. Uh, because while the regulator has sort of made one good step forward to just allowing uh, swaps simpliciter, making it a time efficient process, uh, we still don't have all the nuances of that, that clarified. So, can if 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 the question to us is hey looks like 3 weeks ago government has allowed swaps can we do it i think it will be a yes but with multiple sort of a b c's um, and hopefully as as time passes in the next uh, few weeks or a month so we will have better clarity on it and hopefully there'll be a tax concession uh, for for uh, swaps happening as as there is available for merger. Otherwise, um, you know, it is going to be a um, back to uh, back to the merger process. Merger ecosystems are developing uh, very well. Uh, Singapore, as we said, yes. Uh, from other jurisdictions, uh, they are uh, they are fairly uh, sort of less cumbersome, and probably uh, that's where I can ask Abhishek to come in. Uh, and just weigh in on the offshore uh, considerations. Uh, thanks, Riva. Thanks, Harish. Um, thanks also to the IBC for having me. Quick introduction. Um, I'm Abhishek, an M&A and private equity partner at Goodwin. We've got 16 offices globally, uh, and I've been across the Hong Kong and Singapore offices for the past 10 years. So in some sense, culpable for the externalization, but glad to be involved in about half a dozen processes uh, for the reverse flipping. Um, like Riba and Harish said, uh, Mr. Chadi did gracefully cover a lot of what we intended to cover. So maybe I'll just reflect on a couple of um, it, you know, key takeaways or pointers from uh, the processes that we're working on. Um, I think the first thing to be mindful of, both in Delaware as well as in Singapore, which are the two most common jurisdictions um, that are you know, that companies are inbound from, is just to take advantage of the fact that they're both jurisdictions that aren't encumbered by exchange control. So, you know, typically these companies that are coming back to India tend to be fairly mature, and there's a lot of, um, this, this things on founders' minds, such as equity incentives and things like that. It's, it tends to be easier to effect shuffling of uh, your cap table. Um, and set, put in place incentive structures when you don't also have to think of uh, exchange control requ requirements. Um, so that's one helpful pointer. Um, you, you also, for example, if you need to do some, something like a stock split to boost the liquidity of your stock in India, um, it's probably more it's probably advisable to do it overseas because when you when you do it after the merger, you tend to impose um, you, you tend to reset holding periods for most of shares that, in, that the company uh, that the shareholders hold and also there's que questions around the uh, cost basis of a lot of those shares so those are two useful pointers to be mindful of before you actually do the merger um, otherwise there's 
candidly, on, from a corporate perspective, there isn't very much to be mindful of in the uh, rearview mirror as you're moving back to India. So, so just to before you know, uh, just to add a couple of, I think from the learnings of the last maybe 12 months, uh, I'm leaving out the recent regulatory changes, uh, tax advantages, ODI regime changes. Uh, finally, learnings, experiences of successful merger approvals from, say, Singapore, uh, from our Indian NCLT perspective. So a lot of things have been tested, tried, and now there are precedents. Notwithstanding that, not one reverse flip structure has been similar to the other. It feels like, okay, one has been done, now, uh, you know, it's just a question of replicating it. Not one of the five or six that we are handling um, is a similar structure to the other, notwithstanding the fact that half of them are from Singapore, the other half is from Delaware of, you know, jurisdictions that we are very familiar with. Hence, it is important that once the choice is made by, a, by the, you know, stakeholders in the cap table, i.e. the investors and the founders, there is advantage in, in starting, if, you know, thinking about the, de the design stage and the implementation of the reverse flipping a little earlier than the very last moment, the last moment when you want to catch the window of, a, of the IPO market, which let's say I plan to do it, you know, get public in 25, 26 or 27, 26, 27. There is great advantage in lowering any costs or even effecting the steps in a structure in a smoother manner, in a manner which is, uh, you know, has very low to nil regulatory risks on many of the things which you will need to take calls, uh, you know, in terms of risk calls when you're actually doing it in a very short span of time. Uh, even a private, trans you know, a non-court uh, flip, reverse flip transaction still takes time because there are steps to be inserted across a period of, say, 12 to 18 months uh, if you want, uh, you know, with, you know, easy migration of ESOPs, the employee incentive schemes, uh, move assets, whatever the assets may be, move liabilities back into India, move people back into India, not lose, not be ineligible or there is a waiting period of one year under the SEBI regulations for uh, some of the for some of the shares which uh, get issued into by, by the Indian company. So there's a one year holding period. There are several, several steps where there are benefits in doing it across financial years, across where, where, where the cost that you will pay for reverse flipping is significantly diluted or managed if one does it, uh, you know, at least 18 months in advance, rather than try to, you know, rush it in the last last moment. Hence, uh, you know, which is why there could be startups or, uh, you know, those who are in earlier stages of their life cycle. It does make sense to think, uh, you know, is going to India a decision that we have taken? And if that's a decision that has been taken, uh, then to start design and effecting that process uh, in earlier stages uh, is, is significantly advantageous uh, is the point I wanted to add as well. Yeah, I think the, one of the segueing from that, I think one of the key things to plan is uh, when you are doing a merger, which seems to be the most popular uh, route given the tax efficiency it affords, is capital planning. Uh, because what happens in a merger is once you filed before the NCLT, your capital structure in some sense is frozen. And once that happens, which means for every change that you make, you get new investments in the interim versus um, you know uh, any secondaries that happen, you need to go back, inform the NCLT, and we must remember that the NCLT is not uh, uh, a very fast reacting organization. So every change that you make in your capital structure sets you back and not by a day or two, it sets you back months. So things that we are facing in, in, in some of the examples is let us plan for capital for the next uh, 12 to 18 month window so that you know, we don't need any capital uh, at all uh, where you know, the structure remains exactly the same as we present to the NCLT. Or thinking about, okay, if I do have to get capital, can I, is there an instrument that actually can travel down the way it was issued overseas without touching my, uh, my merger structure? Again, a conversation that needs, to, that needs to happen. Because the moment you tell founders that you can't raise capital for uh, 14, 12 to 14 months, that is a very uh, you know, strong place to be. So that, 
planning reba is is a very important aspect of like uh, what we were speaking about just just to add to that i think um, you know on the matter of costs and just planning ahead um, anecdotally the last reverse flipping transaction that i worked on that wasn't in indian was was chinese so China has had a long history. I mean, when I say long history, it's about 15-year history of having its largest tech companies list in the U.S., starting with Alibaba, Baidu, and Tencent. Um, at one point of time, they had over a trillion dollars in market cap in the U.S. Um, and then, with the decoupling and the trade wars, it became sort of official but unspoken government policy to discourage having their crown jewels list overseas in the U.S. Um, but nobody ever said that. In as many words, uh, it, and, and so it was as chaotic as having. So once DD listed on the NYSC, they, they they were told, or it was strongly suggested to them that they delist. And you can't imagine how cumbersome it is to, after having listed on the NYSC, to then delist and then plan for a listing, uh, you know, in Hong Kong or Shenzhen or wherever they wanted to go. So I think just the fact that we're having this discussion. Quite openly and are engaging with the government uh, is, I mean, it indicates that we're so much better planned and better placed to take advantage of uh, and really reap the benefits of internalizing structures. I think uh, I think that's that's pretty much what we had to share uh, with, with with you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, may I please request Sunita to hand over the tokens of appreciation. All right, thank you so much. Uh